A former CIA officer is in jail this morning facing an accusation that some officials believe led to the deaths of U.S. informants in China. This story. This, it's something else. 53-year-old Jerry Chun Xing Li was arrested Monday night after flying from, uh, to the United States from Hong Kong, where he's been living. He is charged with unlawfully processing two handwritten notebooks containing highly classified information, including the names of covert CIA employees and informants, some of the government's most closely guarded secrets. Sources familiar with the case say Lee is suspected of funneling information to China that caused the deaths or imprisonment of approximately 20 agents working for America in one of the worst intelligence breaches in decades. Joining us now is Ned Price. He's a former CIA analyst, former special assistant to President Obama, and former spokesperson for the National Security Council, now an MSNBC national security analyst. Ned, is this as serious as it seems to Stephanie and me when we, when we read it? Well, it certainly is, Ali. I think with the arrest of Jerry Lee, the CIA has has realized what it rightly considers to be the sum of all fears. And I say that because there are any number of threats to espionage operations, especially in a hostile country like China. There is aggressive surveillance on the part of the host intelligence service. There's uh, occasional sloppy tradecraft uh, by our own operatives. There are cyber operations targeting our covert communication systems. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that while electronic systems can be compartmented and data sets can be compartmented, CIA officers are entrusted with the crown jewels, and that is the names and sometimes the phone numbers and other contact information for our covert assets. Our covert assets are the most precious, uh, are the most precious, precious asset any CIA officer has. Uh, they are the crown jewels uh, because we have an obligation to protect these people, these people who volunteer to commit treason against their against against their country, against their group, to further the national security interests of America. Now, I realize you have limited information, but federal officials say the FBI interviewed Lee several times during the last five years. Why, based on what you know, would it take them so long to arrest him? Well, that, that's one of the questions we don't know, specifically why Jerry Lee decided it was a good idea to come back to the United States. Uh, there's been press reporting out there suggesting that he came back to the United States a couple years ago uh, when the FBI conducted these covert searches of his hotel rooms in Virginia and Hawaii uh, under the guise of a lure. Uh, it sounds like the FBI lured him back to the United States, uh, offered him uh, what sounded like a con contractual relationship with the CIA, uh, which was actually just a ruse to conduct these covert searches. What we don't know is why he would have come back uh, to the United States this time. He, he clearly knows, after FBI interviews, uh, that he was at the very least under suspicion. A New York Times article published in May alluded to this individual, uh, didn't use his name, but uh, certainly said he lived in, a, in another Asian country, uh, said he had left the CIA some number of years ago. It wouldn't have been difficult for Jerry Lee to figure this out. Uh, so why he came back here, I think, is one of the enduring questions that at least in public, we just don't know yet. You know, Ned, we, we talk so much about spying these days and counter spying. Uh, how does China end up luring somebody like this? I mean, for people who end up being CIA analysts and covert uh, uh, operators, I, I assume the CIA does a lot of work to ensure that these people are not likely to be uh, lured in by another government. Absolutely. But the fact of the matter is, Ali, that the Chinese are one of the most aggressive services out there when it comes to its attempts to penetrate uh, not only the CIA, but also the FBI and other organs of our national security. Uh, they have made a point of, uh, for example, seeding in uh, candidates into the CIA application process. There has been uh, press reporting out there of candidates who were uh, caught, uh, directed by the Chinese government to apply uh, for positions with the CIA. Uh, uh, in the hopes that they could get through the very rigorous vetting, uh, background investigations, lie detector tests, uh, and everything else that is administered before someone is granted access to top secret information. But there's another pattern at play here, and that is uh, a fact that was also pointed to in, in some of the press reporting today, that the Chinese have made an aggressive effort to recruit uh, former uh, intelligence operatives. And that mm. seems to be the case here with Jerry Lee. Ah. Uh, when a CIA operative leaves the CIA, the, the CIA does not 
not yet at least, have the ability to erase his or her memory, to erase that knowledge right. of covert assets like uh, seems to be uh, the case here with Jerry Lee. And of course, being a covert asset uh, or being an informant in China has got to be really hard given the degree to which, you know, we complain in America that the government's got methods to surveil American citizens. Uh, they got a whole lot more of it. <laughs> they, they've got a lot more of it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.